So I cut <clears throat> this off and I made my pieces to go up to weld in so that when this is driving and I hit something this way, hopefully that'll give me, it'll be strong enough to keep it from, you know, breaking or whatever. So now all I really got to do is go back over to the vehicle and put a bar, weld a, a piece that goes across here so that I can bolt um, through that wood, through the piece that I'll, I'll um, weld on, and then the hinges so that they're nice and stable too because I don't want to rely on hinges in plywood that are... All right, so the platform is now done. I have not yet gotten it out of the garage to try. It's snow out there. But um, I'm optimistic. <laughs> so and I'm sure when I was explaining it before, it, it wasn't clear. But you have the platform. This is supporting my weight, so it no longer wants to do a wheelie. But if I were to hit something and the essentially four sets of wheels. There's the drive wheels, the coasters in the front and the front and back. And then this is the one I just added. If it was a solid plane, no room for, you know, flex, then I could hit something and potentially get stuck where my drive wheel here is, is off the ground. And so by this flexing up and down, like so, should solve that. So, it looks like my dad's design is a brilliant one, and I can't wait to try it out. One thing I did notice is that I seem to recall getting this into the trailer for transport that the the tubing that came out this way was just just barely underneath of the the roof of the trailer to get in. So I'm going to have to move this down and not sure um that probably is gonna have to come off and i may and this might be just just right so we'll see but um you know not the end of the world to, to move stuff around all right the seat is on and i've zip tied some some pieces on here to see if i like it um also so that i can tease mike don't worry mike it's only temporary I like the ceiling fan piece behind it but of course a floating piece like that doesn't make any sense unless you have some kind of a, a hose so what i'm thinking is i'd like to do like a hose that goes from this port and the port over there that comes up that way when this flexes the hose flexes with it and um and then the two hoses would go up into this um and then uh, I also think it needs like a like a sissy bar or something, you know, that just comes up. I've I scrounged through some old uh, coat hanger pieces, not coat hanger, coat rack stuff, but I just don't have enough. Um, that's too thick, and this would be good, but uh, just not enough of it. But um, it'd be kind of cool to have like a a cool sissy bar coming up and make it a little bit more ornate looking. Not that it's this isn't already over the top. <laughs> uh, only have one week for me to work on this. And then I, because the, the week before Atlanta, I will be um, preoccupied with something else. So I won't be able to uh, work on this. And uh, so I have one week to finish up. And, uh, but I think I'm, I think I'm just about there. Now I have painting and some electronics to do on the inside. So there's a, a, they're called double, double pull, double throw switches. It lets you reverse the polarity. So you flip it one way and then, you know, you use it on like a fan or something like that. And, uh, and so, um, I have two of those in there because I used to have a, a big fan and, um, and lights that, that were here and, uh, th that cable was cut because we used the fan for something else and, um, it never really worked good anyway um and so i have to wire those up what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put some led string lights to go like through the entire piece in interior so when you flip that switch the whole thing lights up blue 
and uh, will give you more of the uh, effect that you're, you know, in a vehicle underwater. And I think it'll be pretty fun. Plus, the switches all being in there, you kind of have control, whoever my passenger is. So, anyway, enough for today. Atlanta Steampunk Expo, almost ready for you.